All right, can you name the Democratic candidate who's been in the race longer than anybody, more than two years? Who is it? John Delaney. The former Maryland congressman jumped into the race in July of 2017. Not a whole lot to show for it in the polls. So let's give you a little bio. Delaney served three terms in the House, leaving Washington last year. Delaney has owned a health care company, a health care lender, and a lender to small and medium-sized businesses. And he was the youngest CEO of a publicly traded company when his first company was listed on the stock exchange. Sue caught up with him in New Hampshire, where he's still digging in deep. So what is it about the campaign trail that has been the most bizarre to you? or the most interesting, or the funniest, or just this surreal moment where you, you're like, I can't believe this is how we elect a president. The problem I have with this cycle is it feels like the social media primary has been inserted ahead of the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary. And I don't think that really represents the American people. I think the social media primary, if you will, is dominated by people with more extreme views than where most Americans are. And so that's what's a little bit concerning. Because I think that's encouraging Democrats, not me, but others, to run on stuff that when we get to the general election, we're going to be a lot of, in a lot of trouble on. So, and since I think the most important thing is to be Trump, I think that's a real problem. What, what, what trouble do you see ahead if you're not the nominee? Well, I think if we run on, it's really simple, if we run on things that the American people don't support, we're going to lose. Like what? Making private insurance illegal. Half the American people have some form of private health insurance. Union workers do, people who work for companies do, Medicare beneficiaries, a lot of them have supplemental plans. I think if we go around saying, listen, we're going to make those illegal, but trust us, we're going to come up with some new government thing that's going to be much better. Most Americans are going to sit there and say, I'll believe that when I see it. So what's your first 100 days look like? My first 100 days is getting behind five or six things, big things in immigration, in infrastructure, in digital privacy, in health care, in national service, and every one of them will be based on a bipartisan bill in the Congress. Because I think it would be amazing. How are you going to get to that bipartisan bill? Well, they, they exist right now. So fixing the Affordable Care Act, Senator Murray and Senator Alexander have a great bipartisan bill to do that. Immigration, we've had bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform. Climate, I introduced a bipartisan carbon fee and dividend approach. Infrastructure, I led a bipartisan infrastructure coalition that had 40 Democrats, 40 Republicans. Digital privacy, there's a bipartisan proposal on that. So I'm going to grab five or six big ideas that are based on existing bills in the Congress that have Democrat and Republican support. Because I think it would be amazing to go to the American people and say, you know what? We agree with each other on these things. So why don't we get these things done? What business experience are you going to bring as president that, that will kind of overcome those challenges and that the way that people look at business people as, as uh, elected officials? I think what business does better than government is there's more innovation and there's more of an embrace in new ideas. There's also a deep concern in business that if you do nothing, it's a problem. But we don't think about government that way. Right? We think if we fight about not fixing health care for five years, or not dealing with climate for five years, no, oh, that's fine. Right? As long as we ultimately get our way, that's all that matters. Well, that's actually not fine. Because by not doing something, you're actually doing something, which is not making progress, and people get left behind. And that, to me, is the biggest thing government needs, is a sense of urgency. All right, so I don't know if you remember this iced coffee tweet that got him a lot of attention. Here's the tweet. I, I'll go through the progression for you. Boston is great. I go to a bar and ask for an iced coffee. The bartender says with a smile, can't help you, but I can pour some Guinness on ice. He had an event at the Boston Public Library. He said his cab dropped him off right outside the bar. He saw people eating brunch outside, so he thought he'd go inside and maybe see if he can grab an iced coffee. <laughs> so here's what he said to Sue about it. So I went in, and I said to the bartender, I said, you got any coffee? He says, yeah, I got coffee. And uh, I said, you got iced coffee? He goes, and he was, he was he had fun with me. He gave a big smile. And he goes, I can pour some Guinness over some, uh, some ice for you. Everyone was like, why didn't you go to Dunkin' Donuts? I'm like, I, I got out of the cab, and the, the thing was there, and I saw some people eat breakfast, and there was a bartender. You know, some, if you were at the bar there and coffee, some people are Bloody Marys. And the, 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 there was a guy at the bar who gave me a hard time about it, and he's like, maybe I'll have the Guinness over it. I mean, it was all good fun. Yeah, you got to do your research. <laughs> Regular bars, they don't do iced coffee. That is for sure.